We're in Algebra 1, Lesson number 2, and this is on linear patterns. This is a much shorter lesson, uh, so this one I would say you could do in one standard class period. Um, you'll probably need to put in something else if you're on a block schedule. Uh, that first lesson was kind of long, so you might want to continue on a little with some of those activities if you didn't get them all done. But Today we're looking at linear versus nonlinear. What makes a pattern linear? And so the first thing the kids are going to do is this slide deck. And so you would give them this slide and the show notes for the kids. There's some questions. Uh, and then here at the bottom of the slide is a text box that will say type in this text box. And so they will type in what is the difference between linear and nonlinear. So to show you what I'm talking about, down here in the bottom, I'll have some questions on each of the slides for the kids, and there will be a text box sitting there ready for them so that they can type into the text box. Uh, kids sometimes like to use the drawing tools, so those are up here. They can draw lines, they can draw curves, they can insert another text box if they want, which would be click here, uh, and they can write uh, that way in the slide if they want to. So anyway, that's what I have them do on each one of these. We start with graphs, then we look at the tables, what makes linear, nonlinear. In the teacher's edition of this, I do have the some discussion notes in there, so you'll want to look over those before you go with, through this with your kids. And then there's some scenarios. Some of these are linear, some are not. What What's different? And then equations. This one's harder, and we do actually have a Desmos activity that has more on equations, so they may not... Um, they may have trouble with these. Uh, they can always graph them and look at them if they're not if the equation alone is not enough. But we're basically looking at everything. And then finally, on slide six, some of these kids will jump ahead and they will see this, and that's okay. Uh, but I did want them to kind of see if they could figure out what makes something linear prior to looking at this. These are examples of linear functions, and they have a constant rate of change. So I've given them four more examples here of linear functions. Uh, the last five slides are patterns. So here we have patterns, and we're predicting the next number in the pattern. And there's more than one way to interpret some of these. This one, for example, they could say how many line segments are in the figure. Or they may say how many hexagons are in the figure. So depending on how they look at this, they may have different answers, and that's fine. I do ask them to tell me what the next number in the pattern is. Is this linear? And then explain uh, a good conversation. Uh, I used to have the kids get on the boards and do these. I'd display it and have them tell me, maybe draw it out, and then tell me why they think it's linear. Here's another one. Linear or not. Linear or not and so forth. So these are the patterns. I did get these from visualpatterns.org, so the link is there if you want to go get additional patterns. Remember I told you I try to limit to five questions that are exactly alike, and that's exactly how many I gave here, is five questions. So once they're finished with this, we're going to go ahead and look at their next two activities. So the next one is making a linear function at GeoGebra. So I did not give them this slide. Um, so you would need to give them the link out to this activity. It's going to go to open middle and then it'll pop right into here. So what you're going to do is they're going to drag these numbers into uh, this table and I'm not going to tell them how to make it linear. That's kind of on them. Uh, some will know if they're taking this in ninth grade. If they're taking Algebra 1, they probably already had something to do with linear, so they may already know the answer. Uh, but if they click check, it's going to show them the three points in their table. And then if it's linear, it will display linear. Um, so I have them do this. And then I ask for multiple correct answers on this one. So how many different ways can we create a linear function from this set of nine digits? So that's a very quick activity. But I would take take your time. You know, you've got plenty of time on this lesson. It's not a ton of things to do, so this would be a good place to have conversations. Uh, the next activity is, let's see, our last activity is a Desmos activity. Now this one is longer, uh, and this is dual purpose again. We're teaching today a little bit more about how to turn on graphs in the graphing calculator itself. So I'll go ahead and preview the activity. Here they have uh, two functions, and again, they should 
probably automatically go to linear nonlinear for this but that's okay if they don't now the question is which is linear which is nonlinear why uh, sketch an example of a linear function so on this one they'll use these tools again they can use the line tool that's the easiest way if they try to freehand it it's probably going to be pretty messy uh, but you can show them how to erase and they can also click this X to start over they can change the colors so once again just review these tools this is the opportunity to learn the software on slide number three they're going to sketch an example of a nonlinear function you can display these for the class and talk about why what makes something nonlinear again and here is the same two functions again what do you notice about these equations you're given the equations now so we're going to analyze the equations and see what it is about them that creates a linear function or a nonlinear function uh, you'll have teacher moves down here so be sure to read through those before you do the activity because it does kind of explain what's what and so on this one you'll sort these into linear nonlinear this is a real quick check and then here while they're waiting for the others to catch up if they're working independently they can draw a roller coaster with two linear and two nonlinear forms in the roller coaster an opportunity to be creative so this would be eligible for their portfolio uh, now here's something new they have a basically a screen from the graphing calculator and they are told to click on the circles next to the equations to turn them on one at a time so they would turn this on and they can see the red line in the graph and they can turn it off you might want to go on to say click and hold and then they can choose a dashed line a dotted line they could change the thickness of their line and the color of their line so these are things you can review at this time that's probably what I would do if I were teaching this I'm going to turn that one off before I turn this one on and I'll turn that one off and then they should notice that all these are lines because these are all linear functions okay the next one is uh, the same functions and it's asking what do they all have in common what are clues you can do to determine if it's linear so that we've already talked about it this is a good time to check for understanding and then number 10 we are doing this I did change this one I'll get rid of that one uh, I don't want to use and I'm glad I did this because a lot of people say this one's nonlinear uh, but technically it's a piecewise of linear functions in other words this is a linear function and this is a linear function so I would definitely not include that one so I'll get that one out of there but these are nonlinear and then I, what I'll do is I'll add square root sqrt is square root of x you may notice I didn't type y equals that's something else you could talk about if you want but they don't have to type y equals to get a function in Desmos and these are all nonlinear so that's what's going to be in their activity uh, on slide number 10 and then I'll have to fix his picture because that shouldn't be in there all right number 12 in line 2 create your example of a linear equation so they could just do y equals mx plus b um, this would be a good chance to re or to introduce sliders if you want to do it as a class you could say let's just type mx plus b because they've learned that in their middle school class when they click all it will add sliders and then they can adjust their m to be a number and then they can adjust their b to be some number so that would be their equation it's the same as y equals let's see this one's negative x plus six and you'll notice it typed right over the red so you could have them play here on this one where they're creating their own linear function for the next function create a nonlinear equation so there's lots of options here they could use a quadratic y equals x squared they could probably a lot of them are going to go back and find an equation that they've seen in a previous slide and that's fine we're just starting so so no problem if they do that but have them create their own uh, and then here they'll do a card sort nonlinear and linear so hopefully they know the slides that are are the cards that are straight lines are going to be their linear functions and the ones that are curvy are going to be their nonlinear now they may not remember the ones that have equations so I did put the handy dandy graphing calculator here and they absolutely can use it we do want them to know these without that eventually but 
theoretically it's not going to matter for a lot of you because if your kids are like my kids we use the graphing calculator for every item in our state test and for pretty much every item on every test so anytime they need to type it to remember they can type it to remember so um, that's another reason I usually put it in here but they can go ahead and choose linear nonlinear there's got an x squared so that one's nonlinear and so forth all right, so then we go on to go crazy. This is the last slide, so it's time to have a little fun. They can type in functions. You could review sliders again. You might do something like this. They always love this. Y equals AX plus B. Click all, and then click play, and then your lines will go crazy. So they could have lines dancing around the graph. That's always great fun when I show them that. Uh, they could do Y equals CX squared. And then we could add another slider and we could click play on that slider too so they could have a parabola that's doing crazy things on the graph. So these are things they can do. Uh, they don't have to use sliders. You could just have them type something at this point. But if you want to introduce them, that's a good place to do it, especially if you have plenty of time left in your class period. So that's it for this lesson. Not very long. I think you'll enjoy it. It is an opportunity to kind of learn a little bit about the calculator, so I hope that you'll take the opportunity. So far, the topics that we've done are not totally new for kids, but, you know, they probably are because a lot of kids learn a lot about how to manipulate equations, expressions, maybe even numbers, but they don't ever really dig deep into why something's called linear and why it's nonlinear and what that really means. So take the time to have these conversations. You are laying the foundation of functions and that is going to go uh, a long way to help these kids as they progress through the course, the Algebra 1 course. If y'all have any questions, y'all hit me up on Twitter. Leave me a comment or question or suggestion and I will happily reply. Y'all have a great day.